Hey everyone, um, welcome to the House of Foggins. Um, it's great to have you with us here today. Um, it's, as you can see, a very different um, kind of church service that we're trying to put on for you today. Um, obviously because of the new restrictions that have been in place, um, that the government have put in place, we're now not currently filming at the Eastgate building. Um, so we've managed to get some equipment and quickly get it here into my house um, and set up a makeshift studio here just so we can bring something to you. Um, it's a bit of an experiment, so bear with me. Um, I don't really know how this is going to go. Um, I, am, I am the one person crew today, although actually that's not entirely true because two of my kids did help, Joel and Levi, thanks guys, um, and they did a great job. Um, but yeah, so we're experimenting here. Now I know um, a few people have asked about um, worship and are we going to be able to tie worship into some of these online services? Now, that is, just to let you know, that is something that we were working on. It's definitely our heart to do that and try and give you that kind of experience. But um, when the restrictions came in place, that kind of changed the parameters for us a bit. So we're still trying to work that through. So bear with us on that, but I just want to let you know that we're trying to work on that. Um, however, this week we do have some pre-recorded ses worship sessions that we've done um, and we're going to release one of those this week, probably on Wednesday night. But keep an eye on um, social media and emails I'm sure will go out too and we'll let you know all about that. I'm really excited today that we've got Dave Carter joining us. Dave's joining us on a Zoom call. Um, he's got some stuff that he wants to share. It's going to be really interesting to hear from him. Um, so I'm kind of the host, I guess Dave is kind of the preacher, <laughs> but we're going to just be kind of like batting off each other, so that's going to be fun. Um, but before we do that, I just want to pray, because for me it's really, really important that um, I'm always trying to challenge myself, and I feel like God is challenging me in terms of how we can use media, what that can look like. Now, I don't think that me being sat here in my room, in my kitchen, in this kind of makeshift studio setup, means that it needs to feel like this isn't a service and that we're not ministering to one another. Although I can't see you guys, um, I still can feel a connection to you. So let's just, let's invite Holy Spirit to be part of this situation right now and lift it up to him. So Father, right now we just give you thanks and we give you praise. While we thank you for your presence. Lord, your presence is so good. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. You are still the King. You are still the Lord. And you are still the same person now who you were three weeks ago. You are still faithful and you are still good. And Lord, we just love you. We lift your name up right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Dave, it's so good to have you with us. Thank you, mate. It's great to see you. It's great to see anyone these days. So, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you most of all. Um, I am. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's been a kind of crazy sort of time for us. We've had, as I'm sure it is for everybody, a lot's going on, and um, it's everything's changing, isn't it? Everything's changing for everybody, and everybody's trying to adapt to a completely different way of doing life in a very, very bizarre situation. Um, how is it in the Carter household? Yeah, we're good. I mean, we, we figure we were a week ahead of the game in that we had some minor symptoms. Sam had a cough uh, a couple of weeks ago. So whilst no one's been hugely ill, um, we've been at home for the last two weeks. Um, and I think we're probably in the same situation that a lot of people are in. Of, of I think this week, especially looking around going, Oh wow! This this actually is going on for quite a long time. This uh, this is now what what life looks like. Uh, we've been really blessed, though. You know, I think you know we've been uh, we've been kept well as a family. I feel really blessed. You know, I'm in the house with the three people on the planet that I most want to spend time with, and we're all still talking to each other at this stage. And so I'm going to count that as a win. Um, yeah, good times. <laughs> that is a definite win. That is a definite win. Um, and so when does your isolation period come to an end then for you guys? Basically after this weekend. So I go back to work uh, as a GP on Monday. Um, 
that's going to be, yeah, that's a busy time. Uh, it's an interesting time to be working in healthcare, but also consider that just a real privilege to just be able to be part of the solution to this problem, uh, to be able to just bring heaven into that environment, um, and just to go in that with hope and, and without fear, really, you know, going to be sensible about that. You know, as a GP, I'm going to be wearing the appropriate you know, protective equipment and taking the relevant precautions, uh, but also just trusting that God's just going to use me in that workplace. Um, I'm really blessed with the colleagues that I've got um, and, you know, all the staff at the surgery. Um, just really seeing that as just, you know, uh, I feel there's a sacrifice there, but I think that's also really a privilege. Um, also, means I get to go out of the house because my job's deemed essential. So, you know, you've got to look on the bright side. So, Dave, I know that you, you had some things on your heart that you wanted to share. Um, what is it you kind of that you feel like God's saying to you right now at this time? I think at the moment, I mean, very much uh, I try and just maintain my normal walk with God at this time, just listening to him and uh, trusting that whilst a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to pay attention to is around what God's speaking into the current situation, also believing that you know, not everything that God has to say is around coronavirus at the moment, but actually he, you know, the same way that I try and not talk to everyone just about that current problem. I figure my relationship with God is just the same. However, I think being mindful of that, there's just a few things that has been brought to mind, really, just in terms of looking at this situation and, you know, how I feel that God's viewing this and how I'm processing that. And partly just looked at a couple of biblical parallels. Um, so obviously this is a, a moment of national crisis and if you look at examples of that in scripture, you had other times when like, entire nations faced major problems and the people of God had to work out what their place in that was. Mm -hmm. And so most of that was dealing with probably famine would, would be the key examples. And so the ones that came to mind would be the drought in the time of Elijah um, and then a famine around the time of Joseph. And just really being really interested in the way that God spoke into those situations was very different both times. Um, you know, when Elijah brought, that, brought drought, um, you know, prophesied there'd be no rain, obviously crops are going to fail. Um, he's effectively provided for and God speaks to him and just and kind of gets him to really tap in just to the miraculous, the supernatural provision of God. Uh, that, you know, he's fed by ravens, uh, which is just mad. And then he's got the never-ending never kind of uh, jar of flour with the widow at Zarephath. And it's very much that, just that supernatural provision of just trusting that God multiplies and that whatever's going on in the natural, it doesn't limit God's resources. But then I look at uh, Joseph as well, where, you know, Joseph interprets a dream and speaks into the future and says, guys, in seven years, there's going to be this terrible famine. There's going to be this natural disaster. And the response and what God prompts him to do at that point is, well, we best start, you know, saving some resources. We best be responsible at this time. And, you know, they used effectively, you know, just wise practice, um, you know, good storage of food, um, uh, I know that's a difficult time message around time of stockpiling. It's not something I'm encouraging, but it's something that Joseph did. And <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, it's not, not, this isn't me prompting you to just go out and stock up on 50 tins of beans, but uh, Joseph very much, you know, it was that thing of just setting aside of just being good stewards, good practice of, of actually taking sensible measures um, really with just kind of God given wisdom about using human resources well. And I feel that kind of our role in this is really to be listening to God in terms of what he feels that um, we should be tapping into at this time, that there's the um, being wise in terms of human practice, you know, the, the self-isolation, the social distancing, that's all wise um, kind of measures. Um, we should be mindful of that as well as just being obedient to the government. We should be doing that, I believe, as an act of worship. Um, seeing that as an option that, you know, we, by doing that, we're all saving lives. But then we're also trusting that, you know, like the example with Elijah, that God's really got the ability just to bring miraculous supernatural provision, that we're going to see examples in this season of food multiplied, of divine protection, 
of healing of, of people who would have died but actually the supernatural intervention of god comes in and stops that and we see people protected and actually i think we can see people thrive in this time that's so good yeah um i love that i think um one of the things that i um that that reminds me of is actually when um uh, when we were living in bethel and um when we were kind of, I guess our finances were significantly more squeezed then than they were, you know, before when we had jobs and so on. And, um, and Kate will remember this too. It was the bizarrest thing. We actually had this period of time where our bin bags were multiplying. So we had a, a, nothing else, just bin bags. And I was just like, why, why bin bags? But we had like a roll of 12 black bin liners and that roll of 12 lasted us the best part of a year and you know we only had one kid at the time but you're changing that a few times a week and and it, <laughs> it lasted like it just kept just kept growing it just never got smaller until near the end of the, that school year um absolutely bizarre and I've, I've not experienced it with food but as i as you were saying that it just reminded me of that and um I, I agree. I believe that um, we should expect to see the miraculous. So I think it's an opportunity for us to press into more of God and actually to press into him in a deeper way. Um, that being said, I don't want to belittle the fact that many people are going through really scary times and finding it really, really hard. And, and, and I want to acknowledge the, the reality of that. But for all of us, it's an, it is an opportunity to press into him in a new way, isn't it? I mean, I, I completely agree. And yeah, just picking up on what you said there, it, it, it's about celebrating what God is doing, even if you don't particularly understand it. Or why bin bags? Like, you know, why, why can't it be steak? You're like, you know, why couldn't he have multiplied something else? But actually it's thinking, well, it's all a miracle. And it's just highlighting that God is doing stuff and it's just partnering with that and just rejoicing and, um, and maintaining a grateful spirit. I think with that, it's just really, really important. But yeah, kind of on what you've said also of really just acknowledging this is a really difficult time for people. So, you know, with, with Zoe and Sam, we're doing family worship times this week and just, pro and, but again, just processing some of that. And one of the memory verses that I've taught them this week was, of Romans where it says rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn because as a family we're needing to identify that actually individuals in the family are processing this differently that sometimes people are feeling upset that there's a sense of loss you know we were actually supposed to be on holiday in Florida as of two days ago um, and I know on the global scale you know no one's died um, and you know we're not sure of food we still count ourselves really blessed but there is that sense of, oh, we, we planned for that a long time and, you know, put a lot of effort and had really looked forward to that. And now that's gone. And so just handling that with our kids and just saying, look, it's okay to be sad at the moment. Like you don't have to pretend that you're happy all the time, but we, we, we show sympathy to those that are actually going through difficulty. Um, but we still take the time, anytime that something's good has happened or someone has a good testimony, of just really deliberately celebrating that and just choosing to to be joyful with those uh, that are experiencing God's goodness. I think that's so so important because it's it's really easy to partner with the opposite and that temptation is very very strong and almost that is often our default in it actually to to partner with that wrong spirit and actually when somebody else you you feel like somebody else is being blessed and actually it feels like things are being taken away from you to actually partner with the wrong spirit. But when we rejoice with them, like you say, actually something gets released into our own lives. It is literally like the testimony being released into our own lives. Well, so you could have been, you're meant to be in Florida right now. And here you are on a chair in my, in my kitchen talking to me. I guess silver, every cloud, right, Dave, has a silver lining. Mate, you are, you know, it, you are like 90% of the standard I would have expected from a Florida holiday. I just, you know, got to say that this, yeah, I'm not going to say it's made it all the way, but this is pretty much made up for it in my eyes, um, being able to see you 
across a computer screen. Yeah, it's a dream come true, got to say. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm not sure that your family will feel the same way, but I appreciate that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting when they watch this. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, we'll see their reaction. But you know, I'm sure that they are equally delighted that I'm, I'm talking to you. Although, yeah, maybe Disneyland might have been yeah, just a bit more optimal. We'll see. One of the things that you um, have had to do, I guess, is process disappointment um, as a family with the kids walking them through that that's probably something that in every household uh, to some degree people have been processing disappointment and working out how to and for some it's massive it might be they've lost their jobs it could be something even bigger it could be affecting their whole livelihoods it could be things that actually you know the disappointment of not being able to see loved ones um, and things like that like how how are you what kind of things do you feel like you've learned that, are, that might be helpful to kind of, um, for people to kind of hear in terms of like what might be good tools for, for doing that? Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, just uh, acknowledging the disappointment, not trying to downplay that, but, you know, where and our kids are really sad, you know, well, all of us, you know, very disappointed that we couldn't go on holiday. Um, and just not trying to always say, all right, no, it's all fine. Sometimes saying, actually, no, this, this isn't fine. This, this is rubbish and actually really disappointing. And I think just being, being honest about that uh, together, um, about allowing people to be, um, show whatever emotions that they're demonstrating. Um, but I think also, I think starting just to, regard this as a time of, of different opportunities, really. I think I touched a little bit on that in my uh, kind of vlog earlier in the week, but it's something just been really mulling over and just dwelling on, in that I think there's been a huge tendency for people just to see this time as our life has shut down completely um, and you know, nothing can happen. And we may as well just call this a write-off. And I really just refuse to accept that. And I, I think that God's going to do good things through this. Um, I think he works all circumstances for good, uh, especially for those who love him. Um, and I love God, so he's going to work this for good. <laughs> it's just inevitable. Um, yeah. This is, I think, a unique time to be able to worship in a different way, uh, of being able to see what we're doing as an offering of worship. I touched on this a little bit earlier, that by choosing to stay in, by choosing to sacrifice some of our freedom, we're helping to protect our nation. And we do that not just because we're obedient to the government or because we're caring about our neighbors, although both of those are great things, you know, that those are good motives of their own. But I think, believe, we've got a, a higher motive because we acknowledge a greater reality that there's the pleasure of God on people uh, kind of sacrificing some of their own personal freedom for the sake of other people and just being able to say get up each morning and go right i'm in isolation today but i am worshiping and I've been reading matthew 6 where it talks about god who rewards things done in secret and i just think that's actually a really really important concept to hold at this time that idea that at this time when it feels like we're out of sight and people can't see us doing what we would do normally, or even we can't do what we would do normally in our workplace or other things, but that God is always aware and that as believers, he's never looking at kind of just trying to trip us up or, you know, spot us when we lose our rag with someone in the house. But every time that we take that moment of kindness or every time we just reach out and kind of show support for someone or we're just engaging in times in prayer, God is looking on in secret and going, you know what, there's a big reward in store for you there. I think there's this wonderful sense of worship in a time like this where we've just got that audience of one. Even if you're you know, at home on your own, even if you're just choosing to walk with him and getting up each morning going, God, I'm never in isolation from you. <laughs> Nothing can separate me from your love. And trusting that he is looking on at this time he is both our comforter, which is a very, very real need, um, 
uh, that he strengthens us, he encourages us. I believe also that he brings joy. I believe there's the opportunity for just experiencing the pleasure of God as we are responsible in the way that we engage with kind of the national crisis and uh, the advice that we're given, but also there's steps of faith that we're taking at the moment. And I think there's a chance to be looking and kind of going, all right, I believe I can be taking steps of faith right now that I wouldn't have been able to before. And that God is just looking on going, yeah. And that actually that, that he's really cheering us on that whilst it feels like sometimes, especially if you're on your own, you know, there isn't other people to really cheer you on. But actually there's a great cloud of witnesses and that there is God, there's Holy Spirit inside you going, going, yeah, you can do this. And I'm so proud of you. Just sensing that pleasure of God over us, I just think is actually really key for sustaining us in this time. Yeah, I love that. It's, it's almost like um, we have this opportunity to be almost supercharged as church by the cultures that we and the lifestyles that we cultivate in this kind of compacted in season where it's everything kind of stripped back to its basics and to its bare essentials. And like you say, it's all unseen. And it's kind of what, what happens between those four walls during that time. You know, when, when we get to that point in time again, where we get to come and get together again, and we get to meet in a room together, and we get to enjoy services together the way that we used to, and that all, this all is just a memory, the potential of what that could look like is, I think, in, crazy because we could actually come as a church who are already worshipping, fully worshipping, before, way before we even get in the building together. We're not turning up to do church, we're turning up worshipping as church. And then as we, the multiplier effect of a bunch of people in a room doing that together, I just think is phenomenal. And we know that God t uses all things for good. And I just feel like there's something in this season that is actually like you said there's great potential i think for for this to turn into something really really positive positive. and what you're saying there about <clears throat> the cultures of our homes and um what's being done in secret reminded me a bit of um and the work you know that what you're saying about worship it it reminded me a bit of like there's been a lot of talk obviously and un totally understandably about fear and fear is so dominating everything you know every every headline that you read right now there's fear behind it isn't there and and um and it just struck me that i was reading philippians 4 the other day and um this is a really familiar verse but you know in philippians 4 ver um, verse 4 where it, where paul says rejoice in the lord i'll say it again rejoice i just felt holy spirit prompt me to look at it in the message bible and it says um Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in him. And I was like, wow, that's really good. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in him. And I just thought about, you know what? It's really hard to be fearful when you're overtaken by his joy. When you're so caught up in his goodness and in just this state of worship that you're just full of his joy. and you know what it's like when the joy just overtakes you and it's, there's nothing you can do about it. Try being afraid at that moment in time about stuff. Try worrying about stuff at that moment in time. It's, not, it's, an, it's a hard thing to do. And, and I just feel like that, you know, there's no such thing as survival mode Christianity. And I think like the, the devil's tried to get, trying to get us into a mindset of survival mode Christianity. And I feel like, no, now is the time for us to be on the, on the offensive. And, it, and what the, I think that looks like is like you're saying, it's worship and it's joy. And it's remembering that he is the same as he was before. And actually let's choose. And for some people that will feel really hard right now and it will feel like a sacrifice, but let's choose to worship God and let's choose to enjoy God. Because if, if, if we can choose to enjoy God in that purest form, in the midst of the storm that's going on around us, I think the potential for what that's going to release in our lives and the world around us is huge. Would you mind just reading that bit from the, from the message again? Yeah. Um, so it says, celebrate God all day, every day. 
I mean revel in him. All day, every day. I think that's one of the great opportunities that we've got at the moment. I think especially, um, I mean, we, we've never as a church and family, as a people, we've never just done Sunday Christianity. That's just, it's not in our ethos. Um, that's never been our culture. Um, we expect the kingdom to manifest wherever we go. But I think that, that idea of all day, every day, just enjoying the presence of God, I think that's something that God is going to really breathe into us in this time uh, and that we're going to come away stronger with that. I think the, um, it says it talks in the Graham Cook prophecy, um, and we've preached on this before in Eastgate, about uh, habitation and not visitation. The idea that God just doesn't turn up every now and then for a good time, or there aren't times of meeting when we go, all right, yeah, that's it. And I think sometimes when some of the other opportunities that we are used to are taken away, like the opportunity to meet together on a Sunday, I think sometimes it can bring the, that chance more to the fore of going, going all right, what well, day in, day out, I can enjoy the presence of God, that actually he never leaves. You know, whatever circumstances are, it's never about denying the reality. It's just about acknowledging that there is a greater reality and that whatever the circumstances are around us, the circumstances in us are dependent on the Holy Spirit, who's just always there and is just bringing all of the fruit of the Spirit into our lives. And I think that chance of being able to just to cultivate that daily sense, especially when we're just not going out and when daily routines look different, is really important just to kind of think that, making that conscious decision of I set my mind on on Jesus every day and I expect him to be with me through the whole day. Well, guys, I'm just going to pray for us really quick um, and before we sign off. So, yeah, Father, Lord, we just thank you that you are just full of goodness towards us, Lord. And I just, Father, right now, I just release your grace over every single family, every single person watching this right now. Lord, I just release your grace. I release your love. And I just release, release love encounters in every single person's life right now. I release love encounters in the nighttime. I just declare that you are coming into a season of breakthrough and blessing. There are people who are watching this right now, and I feel like that the enemy has got into your mind, and he's got into your mind in a way that you're starting to expect. You didn't even realize. It's like it's just caught up on you that you're starting to expect bad things to happen to you. And I don't just mean about the virus. It's almost like that's given him a foothold. They're expecting bad things to happen in finances, in regards to your house and other things like that you've got going on. And I feel that the Lord is saying, you need to shift your expectations. You need to start expecting to be more blessed than you've ever been blessed before in your whole life. The Father, the, I just feel it right now, <laughs> that the Lord is releasing that right now into your life in Jesus name and that you will be known you will be known by your neighbors your family by your friends the people around you you'll be known as someone who in the middle of a storm had astounding blessing on your life I just declare that over you in Jesus name so thank you so much guys for watching thank you for bearing with us as we do this experiment I hope it's kind of sort of worked <laughs> If it hasn't, I promise that we'll try and do better next time. Um, have a great week. Um, keep connected to each other. Keep connecting to each other through social media and what, uh, what other means you have. And keep your eye out for some worship, probably coming this Wednesday night. So have a great week and we'll see you soon.